So this video is going to look at the physical properties of organic molecules. Um, and so when we're talking about physical properties, we're going to talk about, okay, melting point, boiling point, and water solubility. And how that varies between organic molecules, why, and how to write a response about that. So, first of all, we're going to look at uh, melting point and boiling point. So if we're talking about the difference between melting point and boiling point of a molecule, we're talking about what are the intermolecular forces between them. And when we say between, we mean between molecules of the same type. So what we mean by that is, okay, what about um, the secondary forces between water molecules and other water molecules, or what are the secondary forces if I have um, ethanol, what, what are the secondary forces that are forming between other ethanol molecules? Um, so for example, we've got ethanol or, or water. And so we're talking about the, the forces that form between water molecules or the forces that form between other ethanol molecules. And when they form, the, the thing that determines um, their melting point or boiling point is the amount of thermal energy needed to disrupt those secondary forces. And that's usually due to the strength of the secondary forces and the polarity of the molecule. And so we're going to look at an example scenario of this. Um, so we have two organic molecules here. Um, now this one has a four carbon chain and a carboxylic acid um, functional group. So this one is uh, butanoic acid. This one has an ester functional group. Um, and so this one is methyl uh, propanoate. But the important thing for both of these is that they've actually got the same molecular formula. Um, and so that's why they're a good example to use. So this one has four carbons, it's got eight hydrogens, and it's got two oxygen atoms. And um, the methyl propanoid also has uh, four carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygen atoms. And so even though they have the exact same uh, number of and type of atom present, they've got a uh, very different melting point slash boiling point um, for the molecules and it's all to do with their secondary forces. And so very commonly you could be asked, okay, predict um, which one will have the higher or lower melting, uh, sorry, boiling point, um, and explain why. Um, and so we're not gonna worry about the exact numbers for their melting slash boiling points, but we're gonna explain um, which one has the greater one and why. So as we said, it depends on the type of uh, secondary force present and um, the polarity of the molecule. So uh, the important thing here is that this butanoic acid um, has the carboxyl functional group. So that means that it can perform hydrogen bonding um, with other butanoic acid molecules, whereas methyl propanoate um, only has the ester functional group um, present. And so it can only do dipole-dipole um, interactions with itself, or we've also got quite a, um, a prominent uh, non-polar section to the molecule, so it can also have a, a bit of a, a dispersion forces present. Um, so butanoic also has dispersion force, forces present, but because the functional group is at the end, um, it can form uh, stronger secondary forces. So the idea is uh, the main secondary force for butanoic acid is hydrogen bonding. Um, methyl propanoate is capable of dipole-dipole interactions, but that dipole-dipole is a much weaker um, secondary force. So what we can say is that butanoic acid um, can form a stronger hydrogen bonding with um, other butanoic acid molecules. Whereas the methyl propanoate can only form a uh, weaker dipole dipole. Um, and it's important to mention this strength 
um, and also the secondary force because they're the main points of the question. So for methyl propanoate, um, they're weaker um, and it's dipole dipole. And then the main point is that because hi uh, the hydrogen bonding is stronger, um, butanoic acid has stronger secondary forces. So it's going to have a higher melting point because it's going to require more thermal energy to disrupt um, those secondary forces. So um, butanoic acid um, will have a higher, sorry, or, or greater boiling point. Um, because it will require a larger amount of thermal energy to disrupt its secondary forces. So these questions don't have to be written word for word like what I've done. Um, but the idea is that we're putting in um, the stronger and the weaker, so the strength of the um, secondary forces, we're mentioning what those secondary forces are, and then last thing we're saying um, that which one will, ha will need the higher amount of thermal energy to disrupt its secondary forces and therefore have a greater um, boiling point. So that's very common to be asked uh, which one will have the higher uh, melting or boiling point, um, but the other physical property that is commonly asked about is uh, water solubility and so when we're talking about water solubility what we're talking about is the ability for those secondary forces that we mentioned to be disrupted by water coming in instead um, forming secondary forces with the molecules so as we know uh, water is a very polar molecule uh, and a very small molecule and so the majority of the time it will form hydrogen bonding with other molecules if possible um, to, to interact with it or, dis or to dissol dissolve it in water um, however it can do dipole dipole forces um, but in order for that to happen we need to know some things about the molecule and its ability to have its secondary forces be disrupted by water molecules um, depends on three things uh, the strength um, of those secondary forces and the polarity of the molecule. So those two things go hand in hand. Um, the size of the molecule um, and also how many different sites there are for hydrogen bonding. Um, so those are three uh, separate things and so we're going to categorize them as A, B and C and look at them um, all individually and to do that um, we're going to look at three examples. So we're going to look at um, one where, oh actually sorry, uh, we're going to look at a um, molecule and how it interacts with each of those different things. So we're going to look at um, propanol. So propanol has a hydroxyl functional group which of course can do hydrogen bonding. Um, propanol is very soluble in water. Um, and we're going to look at how the solubility of propanol compares to three other molecules and how and why those other molecules are either less or more water soluble. Um, and so the first case we're going to look at is for our strength and polarity when comparing it uh, to this molecule. So uh, when just a normal propane. Uh, comparing it uh, to this molecule. So this one is one, two, three, four, five, six hexanol, um, and comparing it to um, an equivalent molecule but with a carboxylic acid functional group. So propanoic acid. So to start off with, uh, let's look at um, propane. So uh, propane is much less water soluble um, and it's due to the strength and the polarity of the molecule. So as we said, um, this propanol 
has a strong hydrogen bonding. And that comes from its hydroxyl group. So instead, this one, which is propane, um, this is a non-polar molecule, completely non-polar. There are no uh, polar bonds present. And so because it's non-polar, it can only do uh, dispersion forces, which are weaker, um, but also um, unable to make any secondary forces with water. So this would be uh, not water soluble or less water soluble. And so um, if we're given the, the overall question, um, is the following uh, molecule uh, more or less water soluble than propanol? And why? So propane is much less water soluble than propanol because propanol has the ability um, to form hydrogen bonds with the water molecule, whereas propane does not. Um, and so water is able to come in and disrupt the secondary forces of propanol um, and it will make it more water soluble. So a uh, response to that might look like this. So propane is less water soluble as it does not have the ability to form hydrogen or to form secondary forces with water so it only forms dispersion forces whereas propanol can form um, hydrogen bonding stronger hydrogen bonding with water so don't you say H bonding say hydrogen bonding I've just run out of space and so water is able to disrupt the secondary forces um, then we have a scenario B so in this scenario, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is uh, hexanol. So um, between hexanol and propanol, um, hexanol will have a lower water solubility. And that's because now um, it's got an increased uh, carbon and hydrogen chain, which means it's got increased number of dispersion forces. Um, and so it's harder for water to come in and disrupt the secondary forces between these hexanol molecules. So um, before in A we were looking at the polarity of the molecule and then the strength of the secondary forces. For this one we're looking at the size of the molecule. Um, so that non-polar section um, is going to mean that it's harder for water to come in and, and disrupt it. So um, a way we could word this response is that hexanol um, would be less water soluble than propanol as propanol is a small molecule um, whereas um, hexanol has a large non-polar section making it hard um, for water to form secondary forces with hexanol and disrupt and disrupt hexanol's uh, secondary forces. I forgot to mention that here we we should be saying really every time um that uh where is it for polar water so if we're talking about water always refer to polar water um even with this one over here polar water um because that helps imply that that's why water is forming those hydrogen bonds the last example for water solubility that we're going to look at um is the sites for hydrogen bonding so as we said this is uh, propanol. Um, for this one, we have a propanoic acid, 
And so unlike the other two situations, in this one, the propanoic acid is actually more water soluble um, than propanol because propanol only contains um, one site for hydrogen bonding, whereas propanoic acid has two possible sites for hydrogen bonding, especially with water. And so when we're wording our response, um, we could say something along these lines. So propanoic acid would be uh, more water soluble than propanol. as propanol only contains one site for hydrogen bonding, whereas propanoic acid has two sites for pro uh, hydrogen bonding. With polar water, so we'll chuck that in there. Um, and so therefore, um, water molecules are able to um, disrupt the secondary forces between propanoic acid molecules more easily. So I know it seems like a lot, but this is normally a, a three mark or four mark question. Um, and so that's why it's important to uh, make it clear for each of these things. So just to summarize, We've been looking at the difference between melting point and boiling point, and so for that it's important to look at the strength um, slash type of secondary force um, present, um, and then how much thermal energy is needed to disrupt that. Or um, water solubility. That is all about um, the ability for um, water to disrupt the secondary forces between um, molecules.